NA10 just released their new feature called data tables that makes it so much easier for us to use databases within our automations. And in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how it works, how you can set it up, and how it changed the way that we build automations and AI agents within of NA10. With that being said, let's dive in. So when you go to your NA10 account, you should see a data tables tab here, which is in beta access, and also a create a data table down here which allows you to create a new data table. This is something new that they added within their platform. And if you don't see this in your account, it means that you don't have the right update. So to make sure that you have the right access, all you have to do is go to NDN, just go here, go to NDN.io, sign in, and you will be taken to this page right here, which is a panel. Go to manage, and then make sure that the NDN version that you have is the 113.1.2. In this case, I should be using .2, but anything that's 1.113, is good enough so that we're able to use the data tables within here, or we can see it here. So make sure to download that, make sure to uh, update your software so you're able to use this feature. All right, so once we have this feature here, again, we have our workflows, we have credentials, we have executions, and we have data tables. So data tables is where you can see all the different tables that you have. The way it works, honestly, it's just a Google Sheet, but it's native within NITN. So it makes it so much easier for us to be using databases without having to speak to an external software like Google Sheets or Airtable or Notion to do something, to take action on a table to sort data. So to create a new data table, all you have to do is go here, go to create a new data table, name the table, let's do test uh, and then press create. And then you'll be introduced to this page. As you can see, we have three different columns which are uh, standard for the table itself. And you can start adding columns by here or also by here. And you can add a row here as well. And for us to be adding columns and rows, you can add a column here. You can also add a column here and you can add a row simply by pressing this button. And to add a row, we can just press this button right here. Put the name of the, let's do person name. And you can choose the type of, I guess, variable, the type of thing that it is. Um, in this case, we can do string, which is text, number, which is number, boolean, which is true or false, and date and time, which is date and time right as it is. Or you could press this button right here and it will take you through the exact steps. So you can do person name, let's do string. We can add a column and now we have person name right here that we can move around, that we can use. Uh, and to add a row, you can press this button, which will add a row right here, or you can simply press this button right here. So again, nothing fancy, like this is literally just a table, like any regular table. The only difference is that we have it within of any 10. So let me go through here where I can show you exactly how to set it up within your automations. Then we look at Google Sheets versus N10 tables. And lastly, we look at a real use case or where you would actually use this compared to other databases like Google Sheets, Airtable, or Notion. So let's go right here. So let's say we have a form, right? Let's say we have a form right here um, from submission. Let's say this was a test form. Let's say we added a form element, which is basically adding a question. We can do full name. We can do location. Let's do this too. Okay, let's make them required so that when someone submits the form, they just put their full name and location. And obviously you could have different fields as well, uh, but that's what we're gonna use. And now let's actually run this. So we get the data, Michele, and then let's do London, submit. I'll go back here, I can see that I have the data, Michele and London. And if I want to add this to a data table, so in this case, let's say someone submits a form on the website, you wanna add this to your CRM or to your data table or somewhere where you can store this information. Well, all we have to do is go here, data table. Let's say we have test in it end. Let's say we do new form entries. We already have the person name here. All we have to add is the location. I call them. So now we have a data table that has person name and has location, which are variables that we can be adding through our automation. So if I go here, I can then press this button right here. I can then look for data tables. As you can see, we have this right here permanently save data across workflows, executions in a table. If I press this button, now this gives me the option of doing these different things. I can delete rows, get rows, if row exists, if row does not exist, insert rows, update rows, and absurd rows as well. In this case, I want to insert row, which means that you're adding a row into a database. It will take me to this page. The resource will be row. The operation, which is what is the action that we're doing. In this case, we're inserting it. Data table will be uh, what is it? New form entries. And by the way, as you can see, we didn't have to connect any accounts to this, which makes the process so much simpler because everything is within your own Anytan account. And then we can map your person name and then we can map the location. Okay. And now if I execute the workflow, I can put my name. So let's do James actually. Let's do Canary Islands. There you go. 
like this, I can submit. And I can see now that it instantly added it to the database right here. If I refresh, I can now see that I have James Canary Islands with the date updated out as well. Let me just delete these two so we don't have them here. There we go. So that right there is how you set it up within of any 10. As you can see, it's very, very easy, which is the whole point of this, right? It's not to make it complex, but to make it easier for us to be able to use databases inside of any 10 without having to use Google Sheets. Now, let me show you exactly how this compares to Google Sheets. What's the speed like? Because uh, speed is one of the most important things. And also like, why do we want to use this over this? Um, so right here, I have a form that I made, which has name, email, phone number, location, submitted at and form mode. Now I already ran this data, so I don't have to run it again. Uh, so now I can just see when this is being added to the sheet right here. And then it also adds it to our database, which is the one right here. Okay. So I'm going to press execute workflow because this is already pinned. As you can see now, it's taking one, two, three, four, four seconds. And when it comes to this, it did it instantly, right? Which tells you like the speed of this is crazy. I think um, one of the Anytime guys made a video about this. And I think it might have been like 150 times faster. Uh, which is insane, which makes our automations so much better, so much more concrete. And now we don't have to use an external API connecting our Google accounts to anything, in this case, Google Sheets. We can just use the native Anytime integration. And we also have all the data tables within one place, which is awesome. Now you might be wondering, uh, how does this apply to real life? How can we use this for automations to a business use case? In this case, the AI agent is the invoice assistant that allows us to extract or insert or get any information from our invoicing database. This could be invoice amount, the total amount that we're owed, the invoice date, the payment status, the person name and so on. And we have a chat so we can ask any questions and let's do it. So first thing I want to ask is how many people do I have in my database? In this case, it would be eight. So I can say how many people do I have in my database? So you can see now, let me pull this down. It called the get rows because that's the action that it needs to do to get all the rows and up here, it told me that we have eight people in my database. So you can see here, we have eight people. Let me ask it the total amount that we are owed right here. Let me say, what is the total amount of money that we are owed? In this case, as you can see, I hooked it up to the calculator because AI in itself is not good at math. Uh, and it says 5,050. So you can see the invoice sent, paid. Okay, so these ones. Let's do my math here. Uh, 700, uh, 1,050. 5,050, right? So here, this got it right. And I did it within seconds, which is amazing for our agents because now they're faster and they can actually work. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do here, add a new person called Diana. The invoice date is tomorrow and the payment status is invoice sent and the amount is 349. In this case, it should contact this, well not contact, call this tool. And if I go here, I should see if I refresh, Diana, 349, tomorrow, invoice sent. That's it. So pretty insane that it did this within uh, one second. Cause usually when you have to call a Google Sheets sort of API, it takes longer. As we saw here, right? This takes like four or five seconds. This took ha half a second, right? Which is crazy, especially when you have more and more data. Cause usually we don't play around with just one submission. We can have like thousands of rows that are being added here, right? Versus here. And this takes maybe five minutes more than this, which makes it so much better, so much more scalable to have something like that. Also because we're not calling the API. All right, and I'm going to leave the link to this blueprint in my free school community. First thing down below, you can go to the classroom section, templates vault, and you'll see the latest video um, and you'll see the blueprint. You can download it into your own account. And if you have no clue on how to do it, no worries at all. You can also watch this video right here, importing blueprint to any 10, which will show you exactly step-by-step -step how to do it. And if you apply and you get in, then you also have access to the AI Automations 101 course, which is a comprehensive guide or course that takes you from a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's able to build automations for themselves or for other businesses. The only catch is not everyone gets in. As you can see, we have a waitlist of about 215 people. So make sure you put some thoughts into your answers before you apply. And if you like this video and you want to dive deeper into N8N, then make sure to check out this video on the screen where I show you step-by-step step how you can build your own LinkedIn outreach system from scratch. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.